You're listening to Real Crime, the Movie Sleuth Podcast. What's up, everybody? Just enjoying the theme song. Yeah, yeah. I was you know, dancing I was digging. a little bit. I was a toe tapper. <laughs> yeah. Rudy, were you dancing as well? Indeed. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> That's what we hope for. We hope for people dancing yeah. every week on the show. Yeah. So, you know, had to do our little bit of hip hop dancing mm-hmm. going on. <laughs> a little bit of funky spr- fresh. A little bit of sprockets. Maybe we'll come up with a routine. <laughs> Yeah, sprockets is the best. Do you guys remember sprockets? <laughs> I yeah, I do. I do. No, now is the time when sprockets when we dance. Oh yeah, I love so, that. Yeah, <laughs> that music always kind of reminds me of that. So yeah, yeah. So was that an intentional choice? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I got that music for free. Really? Yeah. Yeah, there was a website that actually provided free soundtrack music as long as you give them credit for it. Yeah. It's like audionautics.com. Mm-hmm. I know so, what you're talking about. I yeah. use that for a couple uh, projects I edit. Yep. They're really good. So I got that music from Audionautics. Like the first two episodes, I used some original music I had written. Yeah. And then I was kind of like, eh, yeah. It doesn't yeah. really fit with the theme, you know? So it was just like rock stuff. And then I got the music off Audionautics. And the voiceover on that is actually from Fiverr.com. Really? Yeah. Fiverr is an amazing tool. Yeah. Have you guys ever heard of Fiverr? No. no. Yeah. I've, I've always been curious about games. this voiceover. Okay. I don't know why I never asked you. It just never yeah. came up. So Fiverr.com, it's a website that you can basically get anything off of. Like if you want to um, get somebody to promote you on Facebook, you can pay them five bucks and they'll do like advertising for you on Facebook. Or... Uh, you want somebody to take a look at your website and tell you how it could look better, you pay them $5. Mm-hmm. And like everything is in increments of five. And the more you sell on there, the more you can charge people for stuff. It's actually like a really cool That's other cool. form of like gig type job. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, it's really, really cool. Yeah. So moving on, this is episode <laughs> 126 of Real Crime. That's right. Every week we're getting a little bit older now we're the world's <laughs> oldest podcast it's yeah. no one no one <laughs> fact check that <laughs> no <one's> like, <laughs> <laughs> this is the internet do not yeah. fact check don't that, google please. this or i'll fight you in the yeah. street yeah, yeah send your complaints <laughs> to this isn't a real email at gmail.com he will fight you in the street right <laughs> <laughs> well because he's one of our sponsors that's right yes he yeah. runs a martial arts studio matador martial arts out of st Clair shores correct yes How's that going now? It's fantastic. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Pull the mic just a little closer. There you go. Is this better? Yeah. yeah like, try and put it in your mouth. Yeah. But don't. You got a deeper <laughs> look for it. Well, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, now I can hear you way Okay, back. cool. Right on. So tell us about Matador a little bit. Uh, Matador Martial Arts is uh, something I've been working with and on for, let's see, I'm 40 now, so 25 years. And uh, I've been teaching for 18 and if you've seen John Wick or any of the Born Identity movies, it's a lot like that. Um, no wasted motion, very efficient and energy expenditure, and just basically teaching how to how to get home safely and uh, put the other guy down. So you're a multifaceted person. Though. I yeah. am, yes. So you're going to school full time. Yes, you're working full time, running the martial arts studio. Yes. But you're also doing the toy thing. Full yes, time. Yeah. I do sell uh, toys and comics uh, at shows and online. Yes. Yeah. That's a lot of fun, too. And like we were just talking about a few minutes ago, you're seeing a big resurgence in this stuff. Oh, my goodness yeah. gracious. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty nuts what's happening right now. Uh, the demand for uh, particularly uh, 80s uh, cartoon based stuff is, is pretty insane. Like Joe and, and He-Man and My Little Pony. It's it's nuts. My Little Pony, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Are they like rebooting that as well? Well, they've had that cartoon Friendship is Magic for some time, and that has okay. led to its own wonderful culture of weird. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Bronies? Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so our other sponsors, we, sponsors, we, I can't, I'm so tired. Sponsors. I can't sponsors. 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 I'm like Sean Connery. Sponsors. Junior. Junior. Sponsors. We named the dog in the uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> the Flint Institute of Arts, got to mention them as well. And then, of course, projectorscreen.com. Make sure you check those guys out for all your home theater needs. All right. So news this week. There's really not a lot going on, but the one funny little bit that I caught up on today is uh, George Lucas. George Lucas came out and said, or it was revealed today, that he's unhappy with Disney's treatment of Star Wars. Yeah, this came out in the uh, Bob Iger book. There's a lot of stuff in there that's kind of revelatory. There's some Star Wars stuff. I think there's a little bit about the Marvel split between uh, Kevin Feige and Ike Perlmutter, but the Star Wars stuff is really getting a lot of play. I got an issue with this. Mm -hmm. Okay. George Lucas sold Star Wars. Absolutely. Right. Right. Once mm -hmm. you're upset, he was upset, and we know this. This has already been discussed at length. Yeah. You know, George Lucas was upset with the fanboy backlash against the prequels. Mm -hmm. Hence, mm -hmm. he ended up selling Star Wars to Disney because he was like, I can't control my own animal anymore. Mm -hmm. Time to yeah. sell. And now he is upset about how Disney handles Star Wars. Like, dude, I understand it was your baby at one point, mm -hmm. but I think at some point you don't get a say anymore. Yeah. You... I mean, after he signed the, you know, the sale papers, yeah. Yeah. You totally. sold them the outlines and said, nah, you might can do something with this. And then they, to Disney's credit, used parts of it. Right. But, like, if you read what he originally wanted to do, he wanted to explore midichlorians even more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was going to go further down that rabbit hole into midichlorians. Yeah. Which I think is kind of... Like, dude, just no. <laughs> he might have been a little just delusional about it. Like, they were probably like, well, tell us your ideas and, you know, maybe we'll we'll use some of them. And mm -hmm. in their minds, they did, which they did. But to George Lucas, yeah. it's it's not enough. It's he, I think he thought yeah. they were going to take him a little more. Yeah. And it just, I don't know. Just He shouldn't have been so worried about it, though, if he was going to sell it, to be honest. That's just how I feel. It's like breaking up with someone then being mad what they do afterwards. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, You're right. It's done. George Lucas is like, you don't away. return my calls anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I know you got my messages. <laughs> Damn it, wicked. <laughs> Disney, I told you, you got to call me back. Please. You got to call me back. <laughs> you know, I added another blaster in the home. <laughs> Han shoots eight times this time. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta call me back. Uh, call me back. <laughs> <laughs> He's just hurrying in J.J. Abrams. All right. And then moving on, Jonah H Jonah Hill and Jeffrey Wright are apparently signed on for The Batman. Yeah. Which I think is really interesting because they're saying uh, Jeffrey Wright potentially as Commissioner Gordon. Yeah. Which I could really, you know, I'm thinking maybe it'll end up being that he's Lucius Fox. However, I, I think he'd be a good Commissioner Gordon. I think he'll be good in either role because he everything he does is amaze balls. Yeah, but I think this if if they come out and say that he's going to be Commissioner Gordon, I think we pretty much know that the existing DC universe is fully over. Yeah. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. And it sucks because I love our Wonder Woman. Yeah, and I do kind of like our Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. So. Fun. What's going to happen with that? That's kind of the scary part about it. Like, we're kind of going to be left in the air with these two lingering characters from the former universe with a whole new Batman universe. Yeah. Potentially a whole new Superman. Yeah. Which are rumors about that this week, too, that J.J. Abrams yeah. is going to be taking over Superman. Well, because really? he just signed yeah. a, a $200 million deal with Warner Brothers for, like everything like movies and tv yeah and everything so a little bit of interesting stuff happening there mm, yeah and then really no other news this week we did get the vagrant queen trailer uh today from sci-fi yeah looks really good based on a vault comic it's like a new female-led sci-fi show oh, that yeah. sounds cool yeah looks really cool mm -hmm. and then we got the trailer for uncut gems as well that, that looks really good yeah so i'm excited for that so, i just rewatched good time Oh, that movie's awesome. Oh my God, that Have you seen Good Times? Oh, that's no. the you most. You should just rewatch Conan the Barbarian over yeah. and over again. Okay. So <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> so there's there's nothing new on that is. front. I don't really it's notice. Conan all the time. All the time. 
(laughs) (laughs) Good Time stars Robert Pattinson, who's going to be our new Batman, and it's a really, really good movie. It's Yeah, it's like I've seen it two times, and I still get tense watching it. Yeah, very, very good thriller-type film. All right, new releases this week. We've got Abominable, which is an animated film that releases this week. Looks cute. Looks decent. And then uh, Judy, the Judy Garland biopic starring Renee Zellweger is going to be out. Yeah. And they're already talking Oscars for her. So. Uh, yeah, I'm not surprised. I saw the like trailer for a second and when I was scrolling through Instagram today and I was like, who's playing Judy Garland? And then I saw it was Renee Zellweger. She like totally is transformed. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious to see it. I am too. Yeah. I am She's too. a great actress. Yeah, she is. Yeah, she was gone for a while. And Judy Garland, very, very fascinating figure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... You know, people like rip on her because of the facial surgeries and stuff like that. Like that doesn't really matter mm-hmm. to me yeah. mm-hmm. because it's about the talent, not mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. what you do in your personal life. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. we did have a screening of this. Unfortunately, we missed it. So, you know, life gets in the way. Got to yeah. go to Atlanta mm-hmm. and watch like 14 movies in one day. So, hey, <laughs> darn. Hey, the, you know, oh, man, poor you. Yeah. <laughs> I get to go to an awesome city and watch a ton of movies. Yeah. So we just got back from Atlanta, Sci-Fi Film Festival. This was the fourth year. We missed the third year, but we were down there for the first, second, and now fourth. We saw 12 really good short sci-fi films. None were much longer than, like, I think 15 minutes was the longest one. The one that actually won was only about six minutes, but had amazing production. And then we saw this totally tripped out movie that we're going to have to have a night to watch over here. Mm Mm-hmm. It was like an Ethiopian version of The Matrix, like no budget sci-fi. It was called Jesus Shows You the Way to the Highway. And it was like, like my wife was like, nope, didn't get it, didn't like it. And Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that movie was like insanely good. Yeah. No no budget at all. And it it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's basically... Like I said, no budget, and these guys put on VR glasses to go into an alternate reality, and they're fighting, like, Stalin. Like, it's a guy with, like, a Stalin mask on, but it's, like, all paper. It's very, very strange. Yeah. The program they go into is just called Soviet Union. The movie makes no sense. (laughs) Wow, this sounds... Yeah. Sounds interesting. Okay. Sounds like we need a sequel for our <laughs> yeah. Matrix podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds fun. <laughs> Did you ever see Forbidden Zone? Not yet. I was planning on it. It's uh, Richard Elfman, Danny Elfman's brother's movie. Yeah. It's very similar to that. Okay. And just totally like what <laughs> what's happening right now. So, cool flick. And then we saw Memory, which was the making of the first Alien film. So How was that? That was great. We're just amazing totally amazing and my wife liked that one Mm -hmm. and she doesn't like alien at all but she said it was very interesting so that's cool moving along suggested viewings i'm gonna start he's gonna probably suggest conan yep of course (laughs) (laughs) get to watch the director's cut yep (laughs) i'm gonna go back to 2008 we just rewatched this a couple weeks ago but i'm gonna go with rambo from 2008 that to me is like the peak of the series first blood was great two and three are great but rambo 2008 it's just him in peak Mm -hmm. form yeah and stallone was great in that film i've not seen the new one yet so i think i'm actually going to watch that one from 2008 again tomorrow and then probably go see yeah last blood last blood (laughs) i had uh my friend uh dan over and he likes to introduce me to things that i did not see as a child i I led a very sheltered childhood and uh so he showed me django for the first time um the italian western and that was i really liked Mm -hmm. that a lot that was a lot of fun i've got that on blu-ray yeah yeah that's a that's a great movie yeah i was surprised so is that your suggested viewing then yes sweet all right mara what's yours my suggested viewing is a movie called the story of Esther costello uh, I've been trying to, it's been years now that I've been doing this, trying to watch every movie available that stars Joan Crawford. And I've essentially just been doing it by just kind of checking them off on a list of like what's available on whatever streaming service I have or if I could pick them up on DVD easily or whatever. And 
uh, the one that I found the other morning was the story of Esther Costello, and I put it on, and it was probably one of the best movies I've seen that starred Joan Crawford. It was based on a novel of the same name about a deaf and blind girl, and Joan Crawford's character um, kind of uh, almost like adopts her and uh, takes her in and... Uh, teaches her how to read Braille and do sign language, and she becomes very inspiring. She's kind of like a Helen Keller type character, and uh, the I guess the, uh, Helen Keller almost sued her, at, or sued the uh, people who wrote this book at the time because it was so. Yeah. Or no, not Helen Keller, Ann Sullivan, her okay. teacher yeah. there, almost sued because it was so similar to like I guess what was going on. But um, really powerful performances from both Joan Crawford and the girl who plays Esther Costello. Her name was Heather Sears. Um, really kind of pushed the envelope for the 50s because of uh, what it, how, it, how uh, Esther is portrayed and um, how, without giving away the spoilers or anything, um, what happens to her and ultimately how she ends up and the role that Joan Crawford's character has, like almost like a proto Me Too movie, like proto Me Too movement, proto feminist, really, really interesting. I was surprised they went there in the 50s and that they treated it the way they did. Um, it's still kind of like cringy, but I mean, for 57, it, it really shocked me. Pretty culturally advanced for the yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was really cool. I really liked it. I Pretty highly cool. recommend it. I mean, Joan Crawford, she just, I, I love it when she starts screaming at people and just <laughs> smacking <laughs> men in the face. It. Yeah, just, and she does a good smack in that one. Whack. Yep. And uh, she's got good lines and just, she just takes charge. She's a great actress. Love cool. her. Liam, what you got? I think I already recommended this show, um, but I'm going to recommend it again because it's probably my favorite thing I've seen this year. Uh, it's the Righteous Gemstones, and it's oh, Danny yeah. McBride and and uh, John Goodman, and they're a televangelist family, and it's just it's bonkers. And Walt Goggins is hilarious in it. He plays the uncle who's named Baby Billy, and he's just <laughs> a, a complete weirdo. They're all like just insane people who should not have power, and they have power, and it's hilarious and fun and interesting and it's some of the best writing i've seen in a while that's two weeks in a row on that one for you yeah i really this this last episode was really really great and it had a really catchy song in it that's been stuck in my head <laughs> all week is it a, is it a streaming show uh it's on hbo oh, okay i don't have hbo i like Darn anything it. with danny mcbride though mm -hmm. yeah i mean he can do it all like Alien Covenant, like I would actually watch that movie again because he's in it, and that's yeah. like the only reason to watch. That I wish movie. I wish he played in Alien Covenant like Kenny Powers. That would have been great. That would have made that movie <laughs> ten times better. He, he sees a xenomorph. He's like, "You're fucking out." I'd love that. That would make the movie ten times better. Yeah, Covenant. We're we're just not going to get yeah, started no. on Covenant again ever. <laughs> We I never like, saw that. Don't. <laughs> really? <laughs> I liked it. I heard. I was gonna say. I I heard it was pretty good. Yeah. It, I don't know why I haven't seen it. It's just. It, it just when it gets to the you do the I'll do the fingering part and it what? it just has some. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Are we watching the same movie? If not, can I no. watch yours? <laughs> Alien Covenant when they break out the flute. And the two oh, yeah. fassbenders yeah, go to like, town on each other. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They I'm go good. to town. <laughs> Yes. That's what everyone wanted in the movie. See, the problem wasn't the flute. The problem was is that they didn't go full out. Yeah. Now I know, oh, it's NC-17. You guys are so, oh, you can't put that in a wide release movie. But, but I don't know. Now I, I really that, need to see this movie. Of... <laughs> it just gets really awkward in the middle. That's sleep deprivation. Yeah. I like the beginning of the movie, and I like the end of the movie, how it goes like old school alien. Yes. Yeah. But the middle section... Yeah, just it just gets drags. a little yeah. strange. It it drags, and some people, some actors are just wasted. Yes. Yeah, like Billy Crudup, and and just yeah, who is a phenomenal mm -hmm. actor, mm -hmm. like super talented guy. So, oh, I just keep thinking about him and Watchmen. 
Yeah. yeah. That big blue dong. Big blue dick. <laughs> <laughs> was that real that should be the cover of the episode just a big blue hog <laughs> so we're talking about toy collecting tonight we have our expert with us and we're just going to kind of you know shoot some shit about it so what do we think has brought about this whole revival in toy collecting now I do <laughs> think that um, well as a former store owner uh, that didn't quite make it and had to adjust to online and seeing the resurgence afterwards. I think the toys that made us on Netflix had something to do with it. Things like Plastic Galaxy on Amazon had something to do with it, uh, which is all about the Star Wars toys. And I think um, in a lot of ways, people are watching or did watch shows like Toy Hunter or what's that other one on the History Channel uh, where those two guys drive around. Uh, American Pickers. Oh, yeah. And occasionally they find Star Wars toys and what have you. And, and people are realizing the amount of scratch that's sitting in their basement. Mm-hmm. And that's churning the market. What's crazy for me is, like, you know, I wasn't really toy collecting. So adding to what you're saying, like, I've always collected Star Wars toys. Mm-hmm. Like, my collecting started in 1977, you know. Mm-hmm. And you even bought some of my stuff at mm-hmm. one point. But I've always collected just Star Wars, and then Netflix premiered a new series, The Toys That Made Us. Yeah. And that was like, holy shit. Like, I just, that sense of nostalgia started spinning up in my brain. It was like, Mm -hmm. ooh, Mask, ooh, G.I. Joe, Mm -hmm. Transformers, you know? And it does. It just gets you going. Like, I need to buy some of this Mm -hmm. shit, you know? It worked on me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? How long have you been doing the toy game for now? Quick calculation. Um, <laughs> uh, I think, let's see, six or seven years ago I started, yeah, was my first show. Yeah. And where was that at? Do that was uh, down the street, uh, Great Lakes uh, Comic Expo at the Trinity okay. Lutheran Church at 16 Mile oh, and Harbor. I love going to that. Isn't that fun? Yeah. It's so laid back. It's yeah. Really, it's so easy. I had, I had a half a table and... Uh, it did $147, and I thought it was all the money in the world. And well, then, for a first time out, that is. That's, yeah. that's really yeah. good. You and know. Then it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, it's yeah. really interesting, too, like Amazon now. You know, like mm-hmm. you can look up toys. There's so many toys on Amazon, and eBay is just like this constant mm-hmm. trevor, treasure trove of retro stuff. For sure. And like yeah. the bidding that goes on in that Oof. stuff, it's insane. Mm-hmm. Completely insane. So, what do we think is the hottest thing right now? What I see is uh, actually G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe is going through the roof. And things that were, uh, as we discussed, discussed before the, the show started, um, things that were 10 bucks before are, are, are through the roof now. I mean, they're just, there's a, there's a tank, a tan tank called the Mauler. The driver is i don't even know the guy's name but anyway the microphone that he has attached to his helmet is two hundred dollars damn wow (laughs) you know it's almost like it's like our generation now has its time because you say gi joe and it reminds me of like the old gi joe toys from like the 60s those were like the big collectible items and it's like all those guys who grew up with it went through that nostalgia Mm -hmm. and bought it all and the value drove up and now it's like we're doing the same thing Mm -hmm. with our stuff Comics are worse. Comics are worse. It's, yeah. Uh, and, and oh, the GI that... Joe comics. No, 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 no. Oh, just, just comics in general. I mean, especially with with what Disney is doing right now with their movies and so forth. Um, it's uh, if it if like Moon Girl, Devil Dinosaur, uh, their comic. I remember getting ten copies for a dollar, mm-hmm. and now that book's fifty to a hundred dollars just because they announced the cartoon. Yeah. It's insane. I know. I, it's I see ridiculous. that. I see that. I started collecting. Um, she hulk comics years ago year or maybe even or it's got to be over a decade at this point and i got them all for like a buck a piece mm-hmm. and i have them all i have all the savage and all the sensational and i go back and i see those and they're you know getting up there in price even the cheap ones are like i think cover price to five bucks and now that's just gonna go up because she has a show yeah. and on the other end of the spectrum talk about older collectors and so forth from the 60s and and such the pulp books from the 30s and 40s those don't sell anymore Mm -hmm. because everyone who had them as a kid are dead Mm -hmm. golden age 
what used to be 300 bucks is now 10. So we're kind of siphoning and through. And I love those, yeah. so I'm going to scoop all those up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever collect anything? I, I used to collect comics, and I, I was a big um, toy guy. I collected, like, the Marvel Legends toys. Okay. I loved those. Mm-hmm. Like, I would get the ones where it was, you know, you could build a character. So I mm-hmm. had um, I had Apocalypse. I had Galacticus. I'm trying to think there was somebody else that I got. The Sentinel? Yes, the Sentinel. <laughs> the Sentinel was the hardest one to find yeah. yeah um but i would you know like go to places like even for characters that i like didn't really know like i remember going to toys r us and getting the runaways you know before they even had a show they were just a, a comic right and that kind of got me into the world of marvel and and everything so it was sort of like a gateway drug i think mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy mm-hmm. too like with those marvel figures they're so many of them mm-hmm. yeah it's not something that i think many people could ever complete mm-hmm. because if you go to best buy they have some if you go to wall wall greens they always have some you know target like there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds yeah. of these figures and you know myself as a completist like i won't even go near those figures yeah. because i i'm bad with the completest shit, I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, Star Wars Black Series. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's this constant revolution of more and more and more. Mm-hmm. Oh, and now mm-hmm. we're like, I don't know what wave we're on now, mm-hmm. but they've gotten, like, if you can get them at a retail store, 20 bucks, typically 19.99 or 22.99. Yeah. But certain ones, of course, are harder to find. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and like everybody the, wants the ghost Darth Vader, you know, like yeah. there's like these limited ones and it's this constant mm-hmm. revolution. And then you get like the Comic Con exclusive ones. Those and, are always the ones I'm super jealous of. Right. <laughs> yeah. Rudy's eyes like, yeah, yeah. It's huge. It's crazy because they'll go for like a hundred bucks at Comic Con. Mm-hmm. And then three months later, they'll be like peg warmers mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. Walgreens mm-hmm. that you're going to get on clearance for seven fifty. Yeah. yeah. Like uh what's that new one? The uh the Sith uh the Sith Stormtrooper. Yeah. They put out So in the new Star Wars movie, Palpatine supposedly has new guards. They're Sith troopers. So they look like the new stormtroopers, but they're all red. Okay. Like the Imperial Guards from Deal. Return of the Jedi. Sold. Like same color. I'm there. Yeah, it's like oh bright red. Yeah. I need it. Yeah. I need that armor. <laughs> yeah. I need that armor to protect me when I try and yeah. lift all these figures and run out the front door. I'm out of here. That's when you get in the fight. It wasn't as popular as the milk monster from Last Jedi, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder if they ever put out a figure of I that. Re- I, would, I would be the first in line to buy yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. If it was actually functioning too, that'd be even better. Actually, that'd be perfect because then yeah. that's how I get my milk for the day. You can just lay in bed perfect. and suckle all day. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Some guy at Hasbro, is, you know, is taking notes. Like, all right, I'm listening to the show. I'm listening to the show. All right, we got one. <laughs> <laughs> so Star Wars, mm. it's like endless. Yeah. It really is. It's never going to stop. And it's like, y- y- there's so many different, you know, this, okay, so my husband, Mike, he collects specifically Jar Jar toys and items. And, I mean, this was a thing that w- we started years ago. Again, you could just, I would just, you know, it's a birthday or any event. I just go on eBay, type in Jar Jar. I, you know, I'm a big hero. I bought a bunch of stuff for a dollar and he's like so happy. <laughs> but like it's it's getting harder to yeah. find these cheap things. They're not I mean, for as much like hate as Jar Jar gets, this stuff's getting a little more collectible. Mm-hmm. That's because that's guys my age are now like kind of the revitalization of the prequels online are leading to people to getting more and more nostalgic yeah. for that. Yeah, and I guess just at the last Star Wars, they have that Star Wars like expo celebration. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh. the the man who played Jar Jar, his name is Ahmed Best. Yes, Ahmed he was Best. there and he did like a a big speech and everything. And there were a bunch of Jar Jar fans there, and it was really cool. His story is just like it just really bothers me. 
and it kind of gets to the core of like the toxic fandom oh of course thing. and that was kind of like his thing i guess yeah. there like he wanted to kill himself mm-hmm. because people were so nasty about jar jar yeah, yeah. It's like, you got to learn how to separate that stuff. Like, stop going after this guy. Yeah. Yeah. The character he played was a creation of George Lucas. Like, why are you attacking him with this vitriol? Like, just... Yeah, I know. It's very sad. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of where we're at with all of it. But I think he got kind of like a little bit of redemption lately. I think, you know, he's, he's kind of... People are listening to his narrative now and kind of you know, being a little kinder to him, I think. I think it ebbs but. and flows, you know, like the people who grew up with the sequel trilogy are going to be the same way to folks like Kelly Marie Tran, where mm-hmm. it's going to be that level of like, you know, oh, we kind of misjudged you or mistreated you. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. that's going to happen over the next couple of years. As and we, suddenly the I Rose so. Star Wars Black Series figures will be like... just. The like unicorn. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what, you know what that reminds me because that was something I kind of wanted to bring up on uh, uh, tonight. Like, you know, there are people who, you know, obviously <laughs> we're kind of talking, we're talking about collecting from a place of nostalgia and like wanting to own things because we like them. But obviously, mm-hmm. there's a big group of collectors who buy things because they want to turn them around. And I think there's a level of like prediction on what you want to hold on to that's gonna actually be worth something in the future and it's like how do you think you what's a i guess in in everyone's opinion here what do you think is a what do you think is a good way to predict what the things are going to be worth money are going to be see that i can't comment on because like i do see things like so many of these black series figures like uh benicio del toro's character Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like who want I, I I really don't want that figure. I really don't. Like if I saw it on sale for five bucks, I'd probably get it. Mm-hmm. But I can't see how I would know or see the future on that kind of stuff. Maybe you would know more about that. Um, well, uh, my best experience for that would be um, I bought a semi truck of toys, mm-hmm. and this guy, he's a doctor. He's still around. Uh, he's my age, but he had all kinds of money. Mm-hmm. And so he bought six to ten of everything mm-hmm. in, from 1999 to 2008. Star Wars, Joe, um, Marvel Legends, DC Classics, wrestling, and all sports figures from McFarland. There were 5,500 pieces. Why? Because he thought they'd be worth money. Yeah, yeah. You know, and some of them were. Because Marvel Legends didn't make a Deadpool character... Uh, except for C- series one or two, I can't remember for fifteen years. Yeah. So that was a hundred dollars until two thousand and nine, and then all of a sudden it was five. So I guess it's just a matter of time passes, and it's That's like it. mm. you, you, you know, it's it's just something as uh, I guess random as that, where it's like it just becomes really unique yep. after yeah. so long, and then it becomes. There's valuable. a toy line that I collect called Starcom. It was around for one year here in the United States in 1985. And I only got it because uh, uh, it was at Big Lots and my parents didn't have a lot of money that year mm-hmm. for Christmas. I love it. Mm-hmm. But so does everybody in Europe. Yeah. And so little figures are $30 a piece. Well, I only want to wow. pay five. And the European exclusive stuff, which is the size of my fist, is 300 Wow. Exclusivity sometimes carries over, you know. Mm. Yeah. You know. It's it's weird. Collectors are weird. Yeah, but then it's so. like you never know <laughs> no. because if no one, it, something could really be exclusive and rare. But if no one wants it, then it's still not worth anything. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. There's plenty of toy lines or comics or whatever that are just absolute failures. Yeah. They will never be worth anything. I don't think uh, you know DC or anybody's going to sign up to make a Warriors of Plasma anytime soon. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not going to happen. There's just so much out there. Yeah. And it does seem like there's, you know, like that six inch figure is the big thing right sure. now, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So you got the Marvel ones, you got mm-hmm. the DC ones, you've got the um, the metallic figures mm-hmm. now, and they did Disney did a series of uh, figures, Star Wars figures. What are they made out of again? They're um, like really effing heavy. They're metallic. I yeah, I know they're die cast, yeah. die cast figures. Yeah. Like, they made this whole line of Star Wars figures that were die cast, and mm-hmm. everybody was like, oh, my God, these things are great. Like, this is going to be the next Black Series, blah, 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 blah. 
and they just died. Like no one bought them. Now you can go to like Second and Charles and you can buy them for like five bucks. And they were like 25 yep. on the store shelves. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. there's a few mm-hmm. unique ones that I've mm-hmm. seen, like mm-hmm. at Motor City. Mm-hmm. I saw some. I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. You know. So along with all this, I do think it's kind of cool, too, that we're seeing um, this thing with like NECA and other toy lines like that, where we're getting like I bought Interstellar action figures. Yeah. yeah. Is that something mm-hmm. that's going to continue? Or are we going to see a lot of this like like off center type stuff do you think NECA has always been that way McFarland has always been that way but i think that the funko line with pops as as derided as they are sometimes have opened the doors for people to have some fun with the things that they love that didn't mm-hmm. have toys beforehand mm-hmm. like back yeah. to the future or jaws in my case i just bought all the funko things this weekend at a show in grand haven there were no jaws toys growing up that I knew of. Other yeah. than the game. Yeah. 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 You know. Exactly. Other well, than the game. I think Funko is offering like stuff that, you know, you haven't seen before. Like, I would never imagine there would be Twin Peaks toys. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, and it's awesome to have one. Right. A yeah. little dead Laura Palmer, which is weird. Because now <laughs> people are like, why do you have this little dead woman on your desk? Aw. <laughs> well, because she's dead. Because she's dead. <laughs> wrapped in plastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You're a terrible person. I, yeah. You're a dead person in your house. I have a framed photo of Laura Palmer on my mantle. Is it the no. is it the prom photo? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. So, what do we think are some of the like the rarest things out there? Like, let's go for Star Wars. Like, what are some of the things that are the hardest to find? Like, we know like Blue Snaggletooth is the one. Sure. But what would you think are some of the rarer ones in? the vintage line of toys well here in the states uh that would be um yak face because he was only available in canada and i think australia uk but then there's blue snag and then the rest of them but um what people are doing now are the folks who have everything is they're buying the dyes and molds from the factory from kenner oh wow right so the last one i saw was yoda's hand puppet uh toy and the dudes had um the mold for it from the factory and they sold it for ten thousand dollars <laughs> and i'm like what are you doing so are those like one of a kind pieces though yeah oh that's yeah so nice. or my friend who found at a garage sale in southfield um the imperial gunner the guy with the black helmet that pulls the, the yeah. start, uh, trigger he found one at a garage sale he paid five dollars for it got it home and realized that it was a pre-production prototype <gasps> oh my god that's that's like the the best garage sale story ever <laughs> that's <amazing>. like yeah <laughs> so he sold that that's the and dream he got almost ten thousand dollars for that as well Damn. And it's like, you know so it's 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 not and the, the 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 lesson here i think that i learned anyway is that nothing that was produced is rare mm-hmm. because they made at least a hundred thousand or a million of them oh yeah. right right it's just a matter of mm-hmm. time mm-hmm. especially the star wars figures especially have i ever told my star wars figure story on here i can't remember I know you've told it off air. I don't think you had. Yeah. Not while I've been on the show. Did I ever anyway. tell you my Star Wars figure story? Mm-mm. Okay. So, you know, 1983 rolls around. I was always into Star Wars. 83 rolls around. Return of the Jedi is out. year later, you know this as well as I do, they stopped production on the original line of Star Wars figures, and they started a new line that looked exactly the same, but it was Star Wars Power of the Force. Okay. They had those out like 84 to 86, I believe. Mm -hmm. And around 86, Toys R Us had said, well, Star Wars is done. So we're going to we're going to start clearance pricing all these figures. Okay, so Star Wars figures went from seven ninety nine down to 50 cents. They were two for a dollar. So my mom goes to Toys R Us. She doesn't tell me she buys like a hundred of these figures for like five bucks. Okay, brings them home, puts them in a box, never shows them to me. So when I graduate high school, my mom gives me this box with all these unopened Star Wars figures in it. And, you know, I just about lose my shit. Like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, so I'm excited about it. I held on to them for a while. And, you know, I was continuing to collect and get more stuff. And 
me and my wife started to go through like this little bit of like a financial hardship. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, well, you know what? These figures were kind of meant to be a little of a nest egg. So I'm going to sell them. So I took photos of all of them individually with a digital camera at the time and listed them all on eBay. I can't remember how many thousands of dollars I got for them. I believe it was somewhere between three and four grand for the entire collection. So me being the smart person I am, I take the collection to the UPS store. Biggest. Yeah. Here comes the size. I take them to the UPS store. I'm like, these are fragile collectible figures. I don't know how to pack them. I'm going to let you guys pack them for me. So, <laughs> dude, the story starts here. So, they package the figures. I get, you know, of course, tracking information and all that stuff yeah. and insurance, the whole deal. This guy receives the figures, okay? And within two days of receiving them, I get a message via eBay that says, these aren't the figures that I paid for. And I'm like, wait a second. I sent you, fo- there were photos of every, all hundred of them, all front loaded on eBay. You could see each one, how they were packaged, the whole deal. Some of them had stickers on them, but all the bubbles were pristine. Okay. He sends me a photo and like literally 75 to 80% of the bubbles are completely shattered <laughs> oh and fallen apart. So my first thing is that, sorry for the long story, people, but it's a podcast, so you got to listen to me. Um, (laughs) It's a good story. (laughs) So anyways, uh, he sends me photos. These aren't the figures I bought. All the bubbles are shattered, blah, 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 blah. I want all my money back. And I'm like, well, hold on a minute. We need to, you know, hold up on this thing. Let me contact UPS and we're going to go through the right proper channels to do this. I have the insurance on them and everything. So anyways, I go directly to the UPS store in East Point. I talk to the girl that packaged them. She's like, no way. I was like, are you sure you didn't like crush them in the box? And she's like, no, we put them in. We put paper and cardboard in between and we stacked them in the box properly and sent them on their way. So UPS comes back to me. And this is, you know, various phone calls with them. And they're like, well, okay, we're going to pay the claim out for how many ever thousands of dollars this was at the time. But we're going to pick the figures up. Mm -hmm. If we're paying the money back to this guy, Mm -hmm. those figures become ours. Mm -hmm. And we want to physically see the damage that was caused to the packaging on these things. Mm -hmm. So I email the guy and I'm like, hey, dude, well, you pass is going to be at your house tomorrow at like 5 5 p.m. They want to pick up all the figures. They're going to write you a check for the balance, but they need to inspect it and get it back. This wasn't a hundred dollar guitar. You know, this was like in the multiples of thousands of dollars. You know what he says? Never mind. Nope. I'm like, what do you mean? Nope. He says, I just want my money back. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, (laughs) if you want your money back, they're, they have to take the figures. They're not going to cut you a check for three or $4,000. It's not going to happen. So me and him went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He tried making a claim with eBay. eBay, of course, said, you have to do your due diligence. And I said, I did my due diligence. Went back to him again, said, they want the figures. You get your money back. And I never heard back from him ever again. (laughs) So long story short, he had a duplicate set of figures that matched mine that all the bubbles were shattered on. Mm -hmm. He bought my figures and was trying to commit fraud in, I'm just going to swap these figures out and get a check for several thousand dollars. And that guy was George Lucas. (laughs) Yeah, it was George Lucas. (laughs) (laughs) I I I heard your podcast, Chris. I'm over here with this Ewok sitting on my lap. I'm going to this Ewok on my lap, and I'm really mad at you. And I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for your meddling podcast. Uh, poor George Lucas. Yeah. Oh, man. He's crying into a bag of money. Right. Oh, I know. He's so sad right poor now. Poor guy. Can you imagine? Like, I mean, talk about it as a deal. You know? Like, yeah. okay, I'm going to make the movie. But I get all 
the benefits from selling the toys. That's it was just all his smart, yeah, deal making. Because mm-hmm. like the folks at Fox were like, yeah. okay, exactly. yeah, all right, yeah. yeah this movie's good. They thought that Star Wars was going to mm-hmm. fail. Yeah, he knew. You know? He knew where the money was. Oh yeah, and he knew that movie was awesome. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is different. Nobody's doing this. I'm going to own the rights to all the merchandise. You guys make the money off the movie, which yeah. obviously they weren't crying into. Yeah. A bucket of yeah. tissues either. Yeah. <sighs> that was my story. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> so where do we go from here? What are the other big ones? Yeah. Right now. Well, Joe, it's it's the convention exclusives. Uh, there was a, there's been a Joe Con, you know, <laughs> because there's a con for everything. For for a number of years now, and every every uh, every convention, there's an exclusive set of figures, and those are I mean, skyrocketing because people you know are, have to have everything, um, like two three hundred for a single, three and three quarter inch figure. It's it's really weird. Uh, but what we've noticed, um, and what's the topic of discussion, especially among Star Wars folks, is is the lack of interest on the part of Hasbro to create new collectibles. Um, the last interesting quality toys they did was the Legacy line in 2008 where they had that giant three and a half foot Millennium Falcon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was $200 in the store. And that was the last real ship you could open up and put figures in. So what's the point of keeping producing vehicles? And so there are some folks who, who are happy with the six inch figure line and others who are like the six inch just to cop out to not make vehicles anymore. Because, yeah. I mean, they are pumping them out. Right. Yeah. So, um, and the vehicles that they made for Force Awakens are just are just trash. Just could, I could snap them in my hand. I mean, why bother playing with them? Not that I play with toys, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, um, come on. But uh, um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, um, so, so, yeah. But now HasLab or, or Hasbro Pulse or whatever they call it now these days uh, is basically doing Kickstarters to produce high-end collectibles like the Java Sail Barge or the Unicron three-foot three, uh, three foot, uh, transformer. Or I just learned yesterday that they made, tried to make a Sesame Street uh, uh, cookie monster, a uh, two-and-a-half-foot really? cookie monster they were charging 300 bucks for. But they just couldn't get the backers for it. So there's no risk on the toy maker's part anymore to really make something interesting. I think that's something hmm. that needs to be considered. Do we think part of this is that the toy store has basically gone away? Do we yes. think that's a big part yeah. of it? For sure. Be, yeah. For sure. That's it's just it makes me sad. Where's the sense of wonder for a kid or a forty year old kid to go down the toy aisle and say, Man, this looks really interesting. I yeah. think I want to have all these Right. Yeah. There's something you know? really there's something to be said about actually seeing something, you know, in front of you mm-hmm. and and you know, seeing the craftsmanship and every, you know all the details, and wanting to take that home with you, that it's tangible mm-hmm. rather yeah. than just seeing a picture on Amazon yeah. or eBay or what have you. Or how it used to be set up, where the figures are on the bottom, ten dollar vehicles, twenty dollar vehicles, and then upwards. Like for Joe, it would be the flag that would be on top, or mm-hmm. the or the space shuttle, and be like, oh man, I hope that's there at Christmas because. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> well, and you used to be able to, like go and lay away this stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was yes. so fun. Now I heard they were gonna do those like l- those like kind of smaller boutique type stores like Jeffrey's mm-hmm. something or other. And Toys R Us was gonna come back, but I haven't heard about that in a while. I have not heard anything yeah. about that since like two or three months after they yeah. closed all the stores. Right. I think. You know, the problem with Toys R Us, I just think they did it to themselves. Mm -hmm. The stores were too big. They didn't have enough people working there. And when you're battling against Amazon, I'm actually going to make a really good uh, comparison here in a second. When you're going up against Amazon, your pricing has to be comparable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That record store that I just went to in Atlanta, Criminal Records, Mm -hmm. their records are basically the exact same price as Amazon maybe a dollar two or more Mm -hmm. because like when i was there and you hate people like me that go like oh hmm amazon or (laughs) brick and mortar yeah most of the time i will do the brick and mortar but if it's going to be cost me 15 bucks more to buy at a store then i'm going to amazon yeah but that place like those uh breeders albums Mm -hmm. i picked up they were each 19.99 i went to amazon 
they were each nineteen ninety nine. And I'm like, okay, I feel good about yeah. spending this sure. cash. Mm-hmm. Hellraiser albums were like four dollars more total for the two. And I'm like, well, I got to kind of wait for them to ship and everything. Right. I'll pay four bucks, you know, help support these guys and have that tangible product in my hand. And I think that was a big part of Toys R Us and their death Mm now was like, oh, this store is like 12,000 square feet Mm -hmm. and we have to keep all the shelves completely stocked, but we're not going to go. We're not going to price match Amazon. Mm -hmm. And they should have been. Because I would have bought a lot more from them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really would have. Because they had a really good Star Wars selection in they there, did. too. Yeah. The, the impression that they got the last time I was in a Toys R Us, which was years, um, was a lot of bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. yeah. Who cares? Right. Yeah. Send those bikes back, block off that section. Right. Do Hire something else. More people. Anything. Yeah. Finding somebody in those stores was like Home Depot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, can somebody help me? Hello. Like, I would go into the one over here, and there'd be two people in that 12,000 square foot store. Right. Like, you need to have personnel that know about the toys or educated about mm-hmm. the toys. Um, can you tell me what kind of batteries this thing needs? Yeah. You know? Shit like that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, there is still, um, what's the one on Harper that my wife takes the kids to still? Uh, the tiny, um, yeah, I can't remember the name of Whistle it now. Stop? Whistle Stop. Yeah, Whistle yeah, I love that store. They're pricey though. They yes, are. They are. Yeah. Yep, they are. But again, like birthdays come around, we take the kids there to buy stuff for their friends, oh. or we buy gift cards from there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, where else do we want to go with this? Come on, people. <laughs> <laughs> what about the uh, Masters of the Universe? Yeah, and the Shira. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, Mattel d- did did a number on them in the '80s, and they did what they did, which is there's, I think it's called the Power of Grayskull. Is that separate uh, documentary mm-hmm. on Netflix, which is fun, uh, and then again, Toys that they Made Us talks about too. them, yeah. yeah. Um, and the the background stories for all these are are fun, but then they tried again in 2000X with uh, a new a new cartoon, which is very interesting and yeah. much more adult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the toys were terrible, and then. Uh, Maddie Collector did a monthly subscription where you'd get a figure mailed to you. Mm-hmm. And those are what you know Chris has over there in his room. Mm-hmm. Uh, and those are awesome, high yeah, quality, those are cool but nobody's yeah. playing with them. Right. You know, I don't see a bunch of six-year-olds buying them. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that I, the thing about Masters of the Universe is it's one of those uh, uh, franchises or properties that didn't really translate to the younger generations. Mm-hmm. Kind mm-hmm. of all stayed with us. I mean, yeah, like you said, they had that new show, but it was more adult and... It's very violent. Yeah, yeah it yeah. is really violent. The people are really naked, and I don't know if people... If, like, yeah, we don't really, wrong. like, show our kids, like, that kind of, like... Yeah, I remember It's, like, that. weirdly, like, sexualized mm-hmm. when you go back and watch it. It was mm-hmm. fun. It's yeah, it was. Fun I show loved to watch it. Growing up. It's so fun. <laughs> so fun. For the, for the customers that I see, um, it's very... It's... It's very Mexican male dominated. The customer really? base, yes. For masters, yes. Like they have their wow. own thing in in Mexico City about He Man. It's very very cool. Like this weekend in Grand Haven, I think I sold all of my He Man toys to Mexican guys. Wow, really? this is this is very interesting. I did not know this. And for Transformers and Spawn and I think Voltron too, if my memory serves me correctly, it's predominantly African American males. Mm-hmm. And then Joe is kind of cross culture, and then uh, white guys love Star Wars. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, that's the, like, the culture, <laughs> the the <laughs> cultural <laughs> stereotyping of toy collecting. I love it. Um, so I want to tell a story. So when I was a kid, I really, really wanted the uh, the Shira dolls mm-hmm. that they mm-hmm. had, the little ones with like they had hair and everything. And I asked for them. I had a like a my Christmas list of all the ones I wanted. I specifically really wanted Catra and Shira. And uh, it's Christmas Day, and me and my cousins are opening up all of our gifts from our grandparents. And my my girl cousin, who was like four years older than me, starts opening up her gifts, and she opens up like what looks like a clothing box. But she's got like every single one of those Shira dolls in there, oh, just like nice. lined up. And I was like, "Oh my god, what did I get?" 
And I didn't get any of the dolls that I asked for. She got all the ones I asked oh for. Oh, my God. But I ended up getting the, like, she Princess of Power playset that had the, like, thing she wore and the glow-in-the-dark sword and a shield and, like, the sash. And that just, like, I, I mm-hmm. that was better than the dolls because mm-hmm. then I was she Oh, yeah. And I really, I really loved her. That was, like, my... My like very favorite toy growing up, and there's I have a picture of myself wearing it, and I just loved it. But I was always really bitter, and then I never got the dolls. I was always really, really bitter about it. So, um, that's an item that though I want to just start collecting those because I never got them. So you haven't collected any at all? No, I have a couple. I have like the uh, the first Shira one. Where she's got like that really kind of flowy outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, Mike, my husband found found it for me at the thrift store, but it's like not in the best condition. And then I think I have another one that I'm not sure who it is because she doesn't have Good clothes. Good job, Mike. He tried. Yeah, no, and that's yeah. all, and that's all that matters, yeah. really. And I so I have them, but I I mean that's just one of my little collecting, like I guess wishes is I want to get the like ones in good condition and they're really hard to find in yes, like good condition mm-hmm. because just five-year-old girls just had them so and the cloth rots yes it does because no one's thinking about you know climate control and keeping these mm-hmm. things preserved why would you yeah. i remember being <laughs> a kid three Nick, years old I wanted at this level in my <laughs> house. it needs to be 65 percent relative humidity please <laughs> First movie I ever saw in the theater was Star Wars. I was three years old, and that would have been May. So that next Christmas rolled around. We still lived in this, like, bungalow-style house in Detroit. It had an upper flat. The house is still standing. It's, like, off Dickerson and Jefferson area. Like, really bad area now. But Dickerson. so all I wanted... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, it always speaks to his dick. sense of humor. Yeah, um, that's my brain. All I wanted for Christmas was a Darth Vader figure because he was actually my favorite character when I was like three. Mm-hmm. So they didn't have the figures out yet right. because of the whole early bird right. thing. And my dad wanted to try and make me happy. So I'll never forget that Christmas I got a Starsky and Hutch walkie-talkie set. But they weren't real walkie talkies. They were plastic and they had the little cord that went in between them. Mm-hmm. So you'd have to just go in the other room with the little cord <laughs> and talk into them, kind of like doing like cans, you know? Yeah. So that was the first sad Christmas present I got. I'm like, mm, Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> I'm like, three. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> so my dad gets me this Darth Vader figure, it was from China. <laughs> And they were selling it in stores. It was a 14-inch figure, but he had um, a silver, like, uh, triangle on his chest. Almost kind of looked like the Mork from Orc costume. All black Mm -hmm. with a black sparkly cape and had a black ball. His head was like a circle instead of, like, the normal Darth Vader shape. Mm -hmm. And it had, like, these big eyes on it. And, like, he gave this to me thinking I'm going to be excited and like I'm like opening it and I like see all the black boots and stuff. I'm like, oh sweet Darth Vader. And I open it and it's like this it wasn't even like ready to be a knockoff yet. You know? <laughs> like I'm like what? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah I'm fascinated That's by Darth this. Vader. I will find I found it one time okay. on eBay. Okay. I looked up like, you know, knockoff Darth yeah. Vader figure nineteen seventies yeah. and found it. Okay. Yeah. I'd love to be a knockoff Darth Vader collector. <laughs> Just get the really <laughs> shitty bootleg. Do you know what? I, have you seen this thing? Do you know? I may have seen it in one of the many, many books that I've read. Um, there are folks out there who just really dig on the knockoff stuff, dude. Oh, I know. I know. Because yeah. there's a lot of knockoffs on eBay, too, especially mm-hmm. with Transformers now. Yes. And there's some pretty good ones. Yes. Oh. You look like you were about to say something. Oh, no, 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 no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking peanut gallery. That's pretty much it. That's but a, yeah. That's this corner. <laughs> so the next Christmas, though, mm-hmm. my Aunt Kathy was like awesome mm-hmm. because by now that whole early bird thing was over and the figures were like readily available and you could get like the box that had like, they had four in them, I think. Right? The early bird kit had four. And that that was a mail away exclusive, right. but then they had 
some other like Sears merchandise, service merchandise would have like box sets of like four or five figures in a box, a white box you can get occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. So I got like the main like eight figures, mm -hmm. like Death Star Commander, Darth mm -hmm. Vader, Stormtrooper, Obi Wan, Luke, Leia, Han, Chewbacca. Mm -hmm. That sounds yeah. all right. Eight of yeah. the first twelve. Yeah. Yeah. And then she bought me the death. I had the Death Star, mm -hmm. and she bought me the Sand Speeder at the time too. So I was like, "Oh my god." Yeah. And that was a much happier Christmas, awesome. and I told my daddy sucks. Wow. And then you got, and then you opened up another present, and it was just the ch another Chinese <laughs> like Darth Vader <laughs> again. I think that would just be yeah. I'm divorcing my own dad. I hate you. <laughs> but yeah, Star Wars just I mean, just so many like cool things attached to that. Yeah. And then my mom like hated GI Joe. Yeah. My mom despised G.I. Joe. It's too violent. Yeah. I'm like, okay, so it's cool for people to like kill the shit out of each other in space and get blown up on the Death Star. I'm like, you know how many more people died on that Death Star <laughs> than ever in G.I. Joe? Yeah. G.I. Joe probably seemed too realistic for her. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, when I was a kid, I never wanted to watch that show because I was like, this is too adult. Like, when right. it would come on, I didn't want to watch it. it I didn't really think, is. like, I didn't think, like, it's for boys. I just thought, like, yeah. No one has like pink hair, and no one's like has a crazy outfit on. I don't want to watch this. Destro was kind of cool though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, looking back, it was, but when like it, yeah, yeah, I couldn't watch that like after like Shira or He Man. It yeah. was too normal. So now I get to tell Rudy my GI Joe story, and he's gonna want to kill me because this is a bad one. So I did end up collecting some GI Joe toys. Okay. I had the Sky Striker mm -hmm. and maybe like 25 or 30 figures. Okay. Had the Hovercraft, sure. had the Jeep, okay. you know, just a small enough collection to destroy. Okay. Yeah. So when I was like 17, mm -hmm. my dad went crazy and bought like all these fireworks. Mm -hmm. And I, we literally went to war with G.I. <laughs> Joe. We went. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. I we, love it. Yep. We went in the backyard. We had like like M one hundreds and oh. skyrockets and the whole deal. And like we set G.I. Joe and Cobra on like separate sides of the battlefield <laughs> and just started <laughs> launching shit at each side. <laughs> and like finally at the very end, Sky Striker was still like in fair condition. So we put the G.I. Joe pilot in there with the backpack on. We stuck it straight up in the air put two skyrockets on the wings, lit it, and it took off and went, meh, you know, 50, 60 feet up. Just fucking shrapnel. The entire thing blew up. And the G.I. Joe pilot, I can't remember what his name is, but literally he... Ace. Can't Ace. remember his name? Yeah. You sacrificed him oh, for your he lore. He literally, <laughs> he came out of the plane and we're watching, we're like, oh my God, he has no legs. His legs are gone. <laughs> I, that's that's the spinoff of G.I. Joe yeah. where they're in the VA. Oh, that's funny. That's good. I, yeah, that's good. I like that a lot. You're like the bad but, kid in Toy Story. You're Sid. But, yeah, Sid. But his parachute deployed, he turns. and he landed on my neighbor's roof. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit, what are we going to do? So, like, we're, like, sneaking around, you know? We're like, we grabbed the ladder out of the garage, and we, like, climbed up on my neighbor's roof, and we got him. <laughs> And then the toy turned around, He's like, <laughs> turned his head around. At fucked you. on my legs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Lieutenant Dan. He's Damn like, it. He's like, so play nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember having a garage sale or my parents having a garage sale when I was younger and I sold some of my Joe stuff and this mom brought her kid by and she would not let him have any of the figures that had a weapon or a knife. At all. Not even, like, built into their figure themselves. So she, he ended up getting, like, a medic. I felt really <laughs> bad for him. I'm like, sorry, dude. I got all this other cool shit here, but, you know, can't have anybody with a gun and it's military toys, but okay. <laughs> and then he grew up to be a nurse. Yeah. And made all kinds of money. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Maybe. We don't Hopefully. know. He's or in this very room. It's Chris. <laughs> 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 and just turn that. <laughs> Trevor just commented on this and said, "VA Joe, VA Joe." <laughs> yeah, that should be their new line. I think that'd be great. 
You have to have Duke, and he's just on the phone trying to, <laughs> trying to get like a back <laughs> procedure. <laughs> Hasbro <laughs> did hire uh, a bunch of folks in the very recent months to relaunch their Joe line, so who knows what will happen. Yeah. Hasbro, if you're listening. Yeah. Well, the yeah. good thing is whenever they relaunch this stuff, it takes all the vintage stuff and pushes the value up. Is yeah. that correct or no? Temporarily. Yeah. people initially have a distaste for the new stuff. Okay. Well, I don't like that shit. I like the old stuff, mm-hmm. especially if they follow follow everybody else and go six inch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is. It's. It is like hard to be a completist mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. I mean, because like, still like the black series for me. I see the new one. I'm like, oh, I gotta get it. You mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. But it is kind of crazy too with those. How quickly they're going from twenty or twenty three, like the bargain bin. Sure. Like Best Buy just cleared all their black series figures out for like six fifty, a couple weeks ago. I didn't. I got like two. You know. Um. I gotta turn you on to this guy on Facebook that I'm friends with. He has boxes and boxes of Black Series figures he's trying to unload, and he's selling for like five bucks each. Oh well, yeah. Just multiply by five how many he has. And I'll take them all. <laughs> I'll take every <laughs> single one of them. It's it's weird. I mean, it's um, I have friends who like have collected Marvel Legends from the very beginning, and but it's getting to the point where they're dropping lines every two months or three months. And that's six to eight figures a line. That's twenty two dollars a figure with tax yeah. or without. That's it's almost a thousand dollars a year. It was unsustainable. That's why I, I haven't collected a lot of them. Yeah, because it's just it's so hard, especially when it started off. It was Toy Biz who was doing oh, Marvel yeah. Legends at yep. first, and Correct. then Hasbro got it. Correct. And when Hasbro kind of took over, it got more pricey. And yeah, because they were six ninety nine when they first started. That's right. And now they're twenty plus twenty plus. Wow. Two packs are 40? Yeah. You know? Yeah, see, I just have to, some of them, like, they look really cool, but I just kind of got to walk away. How I many spider man do you need in the line? How right. many How many more Deadpools do you possibly need? Oh, this one has a slice of pizza, so I got to make a new one. <laughs> <It's my ass. laughs> or so they stupid. could just sell the slice of pizza. And an accessory pack. Mm. Oh, you. my oh God. Oh, my God. That's what, what they did with Barbies. <laughs> yeah. They would just sell the clothes. And- yep. Mm-hmm. I just buy the clothes. Yep. Uh, and no figures. No figures. I just, <laughs> I just smell the clothes. Uh, I, I'm not going to ask you what to put them on. Uh, I'm an I'm kind of curious as to what you're putting them on. <laughs> <laughs> Liam's an accessory lying collector. That's right. <laughs> I collect only accessories. I own no figures. <laughs> you might say my obsession is bizarre. You're the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, so the whole Masters of the Universe thing is kind of funny, too, because I watched the first documentary on Netflix, mm-hmm. Toys That Made Us, and that gave a lot of history. And then there was that new documentary that we reviewed that was, like, the whole history of Masters. And that was just, like, crazy how they were just, like, they had nothing. Mm-hmm. They literally had no story. They had nothing for these characters and they were basically like we got to do something you know to compete with star wars Mm -hmm. so like they started putting the figures out and then they released the little comic books with the figures and in that movie it's hilarious because the guy's like the story sucked and none of them connected Mm -hmm. like different people are writing different ones and we just thought that was like the way, you know, that was our, our world building mm-hmm. was these totally silly comics. And that's how they kind of launched it. And then after the toys were out, this was kind of like backwards. Whereas normally you have the comic book or you have the cartoon. Yeah. Something exists prior to like these toys were being put out without anything. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then yeah. the cartoon. Yeah. And people bought the shit out of it. Oh, my God. Yeah. And it was so successful. They did the same thing, I think, with Gem and the Holograms and with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, no, with the Ninja Turtles, they had the comic. But I don't think they had the show before they did the the uh, toys, if I remember correctly. For which one? For Ninja Turtles. 
But they had the comics. They had the comics. Yeah. But then they had the toys, and then I think the show was based on the toys. I think yeah. the show hit really fast afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's just so much of it. I mean, we could probably talk about different toy lines for like 20 hours. Yeah. You know what I really want to find, though? I want the Lone Ranger figures from the movie in the 80s. Okay. And... um black hole oh okay which ones i all need all of them on card or loose loose is fine okay you need loose is loose fine black hole <laughs> oh <laughs> you walked into that one you really I, did you I walked, set it up i walked right into Perfectly. the black hole so with zorro figures they're the the company that made them was i believe called gabriel and they're based in the disney is that where you're where you're hunting after what's that i'm sorry no problem. Oh, I'm sorry. You said you said Lone Ranger, not Zorro. The Lone Ranger, I would do I, the Zorro ones. I would do too. Those are pretty, you know, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. And the Lone Ranger, I've seen mostly. I see them carded more than loose, but they're cheap enough. You just open them. Who cares? Yeah, I think the Lone Ranger ones are only like three or four figures, right? Right. Exactly. There's like Zorro, Tonto, mm-hmm. the horse, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then horseshoes. Mm-hmm. That was the accessory pack. The accessory pack. That's, That's what you'll need. That's why I need. Liam <laughs> needs the horseshoes. <laughs> with the horseshoes <laughs> i see a lot of folks uh at least i saw this when i had the store um people are transitioning from toys to other collectibles so just a little more adult collectible so i'm selling all my comics and all of my toys and i just want to collect statues yeah i know i know mm-hmm. a couple people who do the statues yeah. so now you're looking at four or five hundred six hundred seven hundred eight hundred dollars a pop it's like well okay it's it's not just a collectible now and it's an investment mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and then you got to kind of start to taper back Oh, yeah. The amount of stuff you buy. They're huge. Yeah. I mean, the, the Conan <laughs> ones, not that that's the only thing I look at, but, I mean, I, it's, it, I would need a room. I love those statues. I want to just, like, yeah. my dream house has, like, hundreds of them. has a, a whole room of all my favorite character statues, busts. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I'm, like, I've been kind of expanding with the toy stuff lately, but I've been kind of taking advantage of the sales, too. Yeah. Like, the GameStop sale. When they were like five bucks a figure, and I got like all those Power Ranger figures, like the entire set for thirty bucks or like thirty bucks a figure, and I got all mm-hmm. six for thirty. Like I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna buy those. Yeah, mm-hmm. Why not? Yeah. And if I need to, I can always sell them later on mm-hmm. for sure. But mm-hmm. there is a lot of that stuff going on too with these places like clearing things out. That GameStop sale was insane. I'll show you that Nightmare Before Christmas set I got. It was like sixty bucks. I got for five. Wow. Nice. Yeah. I caught that right at the tail end, though. Oh, yeah. Like, I saw the post online. I'm like, oh, shit. $5 sale at GameStop, and I hit, like, eight stores in a day, you know? <laughs> Which is easy to do with GameStop. Yeah. That's their whole it's problem. A mile. That's their whole problem. I know. It's a circle of just GameStops. Yeah. They need to close, like, half the stores. Sorry, people. I don't want to put you out of a job, but there's too many of them. I think they're closing 200 of them. Are they? Yes. Good. Because there's like probably like 300 of them in Michigan alone. Not At really, least. but yeah. there's a ton there's, there's of them. There's a lot, yeah. No, recently I put together um, that battle, or yeah, the Battlestar set, which was kind of fun. I got like those six figures off like Facebook Marketplace for like 20 or 25 bucks and then got a few more of them. Vintage? Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's a cool line. I like the Imperious Leader. Yeah. The red guy. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff in that line. Yeah. So what else do we want to cover? Hmm. hmm. Oh, there's, I don't know if there's anything else I, I had in mind. Yeah. I had unearthed um, a couple of, well, I had exactly two My Little Ponies, and I unearthed those, and I considered briefly selling them. They don't go for that much. I mean, ten bucks a piece, I think, were the ones that, that the particular ones I had. But I realized I really like them, and I don't want to sell them, yeah. so I'm just gonna put them out. So that was fun. I think you know, it's fun to sell the stuff, but yeah. it, for me, it's more about the collecting and yeah. Like yeah. the too. hunt. You know, I'm actually, I actually looking at the two that I had, and that was another like. 
you know, for me, and there's probably other toy collectors who this is why they do it. I look at the stuff that I really liked and I couldn't get for mm-hmm. whatever reason because mm-hmm. we didn't have that yeah. much money when I was a kid or I'm a huge brat and I want everything and <laughs> I can't get everything but you know as an adult now I can kind of go back and relive you know well I kind of say the same thing too like now like I'm in my 40s like I can do the stuff now that I couldn't do mm-hmm. like when I was like 18 or 19 like yeah. I couldn't afford to buy toys and have fun like yeah you know I was too busy buying weed and beer exactly and now i get to buy weed and beer and your toys toys. and you can enjoy your toys on weed and beer that's the perfect (laughs) way to enjoy them (laughs) that's good good. so what do we think is going to be like the next big toy thing i think transformers yeah yes the 80s ones yes yeah Yeah, i do um they're already ticking upwards uh things that uh we're 130 or 180 to 200 now. Wow. Um, and I think that Bumblebee movie did a lot of good for, mm-hmm. for that line. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a good movie, but that opening five minutes where they're in Cybertron, there was a lot of heavy breathing in the theater. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, wow. I think that finally, like, they got it right. You know, I think Michael Bay in the first movie got some right, mm-hmm. but yeah. they still weren't our Transformers. Correct. We didn't get that G1 look and feel. And I think that Bumblebee movie, most people will agree with us that that kind of. For sure. It's a hard reset on that whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And you could like actually connect to some of the characters. Mm -hmm. It felt made by a human being. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I loved all the Smiths references throughout the entire movie. Yeah. It was crazy. Yeah. Michael Bay. I mean, I don't know. It just sucks sometimes. Well, he just doesn't belong near that kind of property. Mm-hmm. You don't need gratuitous female body shots in a Transformer movie. You just don't. You, it's unnecessary. Your Transformer is flying over over a woman, and, and all of a sudden, oh, he's excited because he sees her cleavage. That's absurd. That's not what Transformers no. is about. Thank you. Yeah. You should. Have, I mean, I feel like some with uh, Transformers, their gratuitous shots should be on. You know the. The, the Transformers. Transformer. Thank you. That's what we're here to see. Yeah, I want to see some Transformers. The girl should be getting excited about the Transformer. Well, and that's right? what was Not nice with Bumblebee. Transformer. Yeah. <laughs> that kind of was happening in Bumblebee a little that's bit. That's Bumblebee too. A little bit. Little there was that robot. vibe with her and Haley Stein, with Bumblebee and Haley Steinfeld. Yeah. It could have been something a little more. Especially the shot when they're in the water at the end and it kind of looked like the shape of water. And immediately just <laughs> popped in my brain. I was like, oh, no, I should not be thinking this. Yeah, I like it. And it just went. <laughs> Fifty Shades like, of B. Fifty oh, Shades like of B. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do think that movie did a lot for the franchise as a whole. And really, like you said, the Cybertron scene at the beginning was oh great. Oh, my God. It was amazing. And then, like, Bumblebee's actually Bumblebee yeah. in this. Which I think in the Bay movies, he was probably one of the holdouts. Like, he was probably one of the better transformer characters yes but actually seeing them transform instead of this like massive oh, yeah you know just vomited trash yeah, on really. the yeah. those needed to die those were in a big way yeah that last the one last night oh my the god last night was hilarious it was, it was so amazing terrible. stanley tucci as merlin yeah that was awful I knew it was <laughs> great i never made it past the first transformers movie <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. When my son hates a Transformers movie, like, you know it's bad. I love that they just got longer and longer. <laughs> yeah. Like, the first one wasn't long enough. It wasn't, like, oh, three no. hours. It's closer to, it just kept going and going and going, like, every yeah. movie. I think yeah. The Last Night is the longest one of them. So you think Transformers are going to be the next I do. big I've, one? I think that toys are starting to follow the way that comics have, like, value is associated with what's happening in the movies mm-hmm. and TV. The Dune toys from the 80s, which I used to be able to pick up for $20 a piece because I like Dune, um, I now have to pay $100 a piece for them because wow. of That's the new That's a big movie. step, yeah. That's insane. There hasn't even been a trailer yet. Nothing. Nothing. I, and it doesn't even matter, I don't think, because people just get the, get it it's in their head. It's just the hype. And, it's not, and they might not even, like, even, 
you might be like, well, I don't, don't even care about the new one. I just like the old one. But it's in your head, so now you want it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's this whole connection thing. Yeah. And a lot yeah. of folks are realizing that I didn't know they made toys for that. Yeah. That's the other thing yeah. that's happening. That too, right? I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know they made Dukes of Hazard toys. I didn't know they made that yada, yada, yada. Making up for lost time. Yeah, buddy. They made toys for everything. Yes. I mean, once Star Wars hit, you know, and you get the three and a half inch figures, mm-hmm. like everybody was like, oh, we need a piece of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dukes of Hazard. I remember those. I do remember the Dune figures. Mm-hmm. It had the big Dune logo on the top of it. I remember those card backs really yeah. well. So I worked a, a toy estate sale a couple months ago. It was a, a one collector had collected for four, 40 years. He had a ridiculous amount of things. It was breaking the foundation of his basement, and that's why he decided to, to sell everything. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he had a bunch of crazy things, and, and you're saying they made toys of everything. They had a toy of something I never even heard of, but it was like, it, you probably know exactly what this is, but it was like Knight Rider, but it was a helicopter. What was the name of it? Um, Blue Thunder. No, was it? I mean, I'll just take your word for it. It was either Blue Thunder or Airwolf. It was Airwolf. That's what it was. I was like, it was an animal, but it was Airwolf. And I just saw this thing, Airwolf toys, and I was like, what the hell is this? I never even heard of it. I didn't even know they made them. That's fascinating. Now we have to have them. Yeah. Jan Michael Vincent. We had the guy at the estate sale. He had two of them. At the sale that I was at, he yeah. had those. Yeah. Oh shit! I would have wish I would have seen those. Yeah, I gotta look them up. <laughs> Airwolf. They were. I don't. They were like the. I think it was the Airwolf itself, and yeah. There was a Blue Thunder so toy or as a well. Yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. Yep. I never heard of that one either. That's a great movie. That's a movie, not a show. Yeah. Okay. It was. Yep. It was a movie. Airwolf was spun off of Blue Thunder. Oh. Blue okay. Thunder was a huge hit for the studio. Had Roy Scheider in it. And um, about maybe a year later, Airwolf came out. Mm-hmm. Blue Thunder was all about this technologically advanced helicopter. And they're like, hmm, let's see. We can make a TV show out of this. Mm-hmm. So they did. They made Airwolf. And then there was a short-lived Blue Thunder TV show, too, where another guy played Roy Scheider's character. Because I don't think Roy Scheider really ever did much TV. But mm-hmm. Airwolf. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> he had Airwolf toys, something I never heard of. We got to find some of those, Rudy. There, I mean, shoot, the stuff in that sale was expensive. amazing. How much is it? Hundred. Wow. That's not how much we sold them for. Probably twenty bucks. I don't even think that oh much. Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> I should have hit that sale a little bit <laughs> earlier. Oh I didn't, I didn't price that one out. I didn't do the research. <laughs> <on that. laughs> We did have, which was really cool, was uh, uh, from Ghost World, the comic, uh, Enid. We had like a, f- it was huge, it was maybe like a f- 12-inch, maybe even bigger uh, figure of her. And I think that one went for like 150 175 I've seen that before. Yeah. yeah. I've seen that before. So I think we're about done for the night. But if you're a toy collector... Always reach out to me and tell me what I can buy from you for really cheap. (laughs) We've all talked about things we're looking for, so. (laughs) Only accessories. But (laughs) Liam wants only accessories. I collect Starcom toys and only Starcom toys. So just send them all to me. They're very expensive. I'll pay for them. (laughs) If you're looking for toys, you can always find Rudy Garza Jr. on Facebook. One store that I love to go to is Second and Charles Mm -hmm. at hall road in van dyke area so if you're local in michigan check that place out because they have insane sales there sometimes like buy one get two free buy two get one free stuff like that they have rows and rows of pop figures like insane amounts of pop figures they have an entire harry potter section in the Mm -hmm. store and their book selection is pretty awesome too their book selection is amazing they have a whole vinyl selection there but if you're looking for toys and they have a lot of used toys there too i just picked some up myself a couple weeks ago in there check that place out because it it's very kind of reminiscent of you know the old days when you could go to a brick and mortar store and actually Mm -hmm. like buy stuff it sounds like a fun place reminds me of like a media play remember media play it's just like media play miss that store so bad that was a great store yeah they were really expensive for movies though Mm -hmm. yeah they were i do remember that yeah i worked at suncoast which was their sister company the cool thing about second and charles is though uh, is that 
um, they actually buy used stuff as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. And they give you a fair price. I had some pops that I wanted to unload, like, last year sometime and i took like five of them there and they gave me a hundred dollars cash for it <laughs> cool <laughs> yeah i was like what i'm like, like this isn't like uh you know any of the other stores where they basically drag you over the coals yeah they actually give you a fair amount for stuff i was there nice. shopping for books and i watched this guy he brought in three giant ass tubs full of old video game stuff and then I just watched it come in tub after tub, and I was like, "Oh my god, dude!" But he what left I... smiling. Yeah, yeah, they are That's not good. they're not terrible people there. They actually give you a fair amount. Out. Yeah, yeah. So, well, all right. This was real crime for this week, and I think we'll be back next week again because we're finally trying to stick to our schedule again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. On that schedule, baby. Get on that schedule. Schedule. <laughs> Send Liam some accessories. Please. <laughs> and, I beg you. I might Liam, have some mismatched uh, Barbie I, shoes. This is, not a, <laughs> this is not a real email.com. You know, I actually got that email. That so awesome. you can you can send real emails to it. And <laughs> someone in an argument with me, actually, I was like, who can I contact to talk to you? And I sent him to that email. And, and then he actually sent an email. It was really funny. <laughs> So just, what is the email? It's this is not a real email at gmail.com. <laughs> Your life is tragic. <laughs> <laughs> I fully committed to the bit. <laughs> all right. We'll be back next week with our episode on Jim Henson and Muppets and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So Sounds fun. Be back here. Waka Good waka. Can I thank you for having me? Visit us at <laughs> www.themoviesleuth.com and find The Movie Sleuth on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and iTunes. <laughs>